Hey everybody, it's Steve, and this is going to be the first video in my series on the new rewards cards. I'm going to be trying to look at all the new rewards cards that came out. Their stats have changed since their original drop, so I'm glad I waited a little bit. But I do want to try to tie them in with the team, with the summoners that they'll be good in, and with the rule sets they'll really try to dominate and be fun in, and the best uses of them and the counters of them. I'm going to try to cover two teams in each video. I'm going to try to keep them under 15 minutes, but it's going to be a lot of information that I'm trying to give you. So let's go ahead and jump right into this with the fire team they had the biggest change and basically the contessa lost her ability to gain life and picked up blast this is an interesting uh, trade-off obviously if you're an owner of yodin you're not happy with this because the life leeching uh, camouflaged opportunity strike monster that was going to end up having 20 30 life when it hit the front row was something that sounded really really powerful and cool and a lot of you were saying like oh my god that's so broken with yodin and yodin's already so strong and it looks like they agreed so they took that away so now she gets blast which doesn't help her at all with yodin so yodin basically gets the same card at six <laughs> as as it does at eight except for they have to put twice as many cards into it so i think there's going to be a lot of players who go like hmm maybe i only need a level three contessa if they're a yodin if they're a yodin owner because yodin gives her blast and you don't really pick anything else up stat wise by going up this extra level so that's an interesting decision by the team if they were going to give it blast maybe give it blast lower and have it get something else later on but we'll go over the card each level its use case is really quick and then we'll get into some of the cards it pairs wells with so at, in the beginning three damage is very strong very early on even in bronze but eight cost is hard to use in bronze bronze tends to not get very many high mana matches but if you do get one it's a, it'll be a good card to have on your team if you have a yodin it's going to be a very good card in, in all rule sets so just know that that changes it dramatically because then this is four damage with blast and that's really really good especially on an opportunity strike because that strike is going to be hitting anywhere on the board and there's a much better chance that it's going to blast damage into two monsters the one weakness of this card now is return fire so this gives a little little deep swimmer a little bit more ammunition against the yodin team because she is low hp she doesn't life leech and if she's only at five and she blasts damage damage onto three monsters and they're all returning fire she's probably going to die and you're going to be pretty bummed out because with that camouflage other, other than return fire she's not going to die before she hits that front row she's just going to be a sniper taking out and that's maybe the wrong term but she's going to be opportunity sniping the weakest monsters on the board getting them off the board and only hitting that front row position to take a hit or two once she gets over to there the the one caveat to that is obviously blast damage can kill her so you maybe don't want to throw her on the board and everybody has blast because the hp is so low she's going to get tagged and then end up dying when you get her up to the next level, this is more for silver players, though plenty of silver players could play her at level one with the three damage. But if you can get her to level two, assuming she's not that expensive because it will be a rewards card and go down in value over time, then it gets swiftness. Swiftness on an eight cost monster is great. Swiftness is a great ability. We all want to be fast, but in high mana matches, you don't want to play a, even a six cost monster sometimes because when it's a 99 or 60 mana match, it's just not what you want to do so now yodin's teams get faster without having to put a weaker card on the board and in general your team just gets faster anyways this also gives it an interesting combo with the pyre summoner if you don't have a yodin because you now you have uh, the summoner speeding up the team and the other characters uh <laughs> the contessa speeding up the team and it even now plays a little bit better with tarsa once it has this because let's say you're playing a tarsa serpentine spy and contessa uh, combo now she speeds up the spy she speeds up herself tarsa gives her an extra hp so she's not quite as squishy for the return fire and then they are both together opportunity and the weakest monster so even if they have armor per se that would protect them for a round or a lorena deck where somebody has a shield for that first strike 
strike well maybe they can get through that now maybe they can land that death blow once you get it to gold it picks up affliction affliction is a very strange one it to me it only comes into place for the back row taunt wave brood obviously makes sense shield bearer makes sense and it picks it up at gold where shield bearer doesn't actually bounce arrows back at you because he doesn't get that until the final level i'd have to double check when wave brood picks that up we'll just go and look at that really quick because we just got to do this when does he pick that up same thing so in gold level where you're not actually dealing with those people bouncing back the damage it is a pretty good little add-on to be able to pick up that affliction be able to put affliction on a back row tank to prevent triage monsters once it reaches the final level it gets blast that creates some interesting combos but not with yodin because right here yodin's getting premium right there doesn't need anything better to be a good card to use with the odin right here it becomes a, a good card now maybe to use with tarsa and it with pyre because now you have a blast monster on monsters that wouldn't normally have blast and so it really works a little better with them so just following back up so these are your three main summoners currently we can go ahead and throw the dice one up here if you want but nobody really likes the piercing though she does maybe combo a little bit better with with the piercing summoner than people would think because now you now if they have like just that one armor on them you're going to maybe be able to pierce through and kill that weak monster and that makes a lot more sense with the Kelia deck i really think that this card is overlooked especially if you wanted to run an archer team and you didn't have a Yodin. And the reason you might want to do that, if we take the summoner tag off, you could combo her with another card with Blast, which I'm overlooking right now, the Fire Elemental. I understand that this card might be out of the price range for a lot of people, but you know, you have Spark Pitties, you have Fire Elemental. You, if you add Piercing to these cards with Contessa, then it's kind of an interesting idea that armor isn't going to be something that completely shuts you down. But let's go ahead and get into the Wave Brute. So the Wave Brood, we're going to go through him a little bit quicker. He's a common card. He's a scattershot monster. He has cripple. He does have four attack for five costs with six speed. That is a really good card to play with Yodin. It gives him another fast archer that doesn't have abilities that don't work with him. I showed you the flame elemental before. I have him, but it's not a great card to use with Yodin because he already has blast. Well, this gives him another archer card on the team in that five mana spot. It's making the Yodin team a lot more powerful and considering they got two archers for the rewards card i don't know what the six cost monster is going to be but it's hard to imagine that he's not going to be somewhat helpful for marchers maybe they get another card with piercing for everyone it's not unheard of for two summoners to have the same ability on them think Ulrich and valamore who both give plus one magic but valamore adds more so maybe we see a piercing summoner that also gives speed and hp for the fire team something like that would work really well with cards like the brood maker with cards like contessa with cards like um it will just in general right now cripple is a very interesting ability but i actually think this pairs pretty good with scattershot in general i don't like scattershot i think it's a little bit weaker than a lot of other abilities and i don't know that it's going to be something that is always fun it does counter back end taunt it does counter taunt in general but when just countering taunt by not having to attack the taunt monster guaranteed doesn't necessarily mean anything if you can't attack the same monster over and over again. I do think there is an interesting play here because this is scattershot with Yodin's. Then at least you're doing blast. So you don't necessarily have to hit the same monsters in the back row to kill them. But it's been hit and miss. I haven't seen Scotter Shot work really well. If anybody really loves this, I'd love you to tell me in the comments because for me, I don't love this monster other than the fact that he's really good damage for cost and speed. And I'll just have to live with the fact that I'm rolling the dice on whether or not he hits the right person. It does counter that Kraken deck. It does counter the um, shield bearer decks and so it might still be more playable but you probably have to put them next to gem meteor so you have at least two blasting archers hitting random targets on the board and just hope that they hit the right ones it's still an interesting thing i don't know if that'll work but i'll definitely be trying that out all right now we're going to get into the water team and we're going to go over these cards because they're a little bit more simplistic and 
I don't think we need to go that in depth on them. So we have first the mirror, the Murd Hamper. So he's a, he's a he's a mermaid. So this card does have Life Leech, Cripple, and it has Snare at the highest level. It's a four cost, three damage, four speed, six HP. Uh, Archer, this is an interesting card to see. the 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 life team, uh, the water team in general has been getting a lot of Archer cards. They they pair up okay with Kilia because the extra speed that she gives does make it so that they don't miss as much. But it does make me think about what the six cost summoner, legendary summoner could be for them. I mean, who who knows if maybe the blue team finally gets a plus one Archer damage summoner? That could be something kind of interesting. Life Leech on a monster that already has six life is a pretty interesting team thing, especially on a team that has a lot of triage. This could be somebody that you could try to put in place to be the target for a snipers in a lower mana match, because if he's going to be taking those sniper hits, but then hitting people back or hitting people early, maybe even with high speed. So he has a, a lot of HP, and then you put him next to somebody that can do a triage heal on him. Well, eventually those heals could get pretty par powerful, and they might have a hard time getting through him. That might only apply in the smaller mana matches, but he's four mana, so that's where he fits in, where there's not going to be like five snipers sniping at him, but maybe two snipers. And if he can get that life up to seven or eight, if you give him an armor to cancel out one of those attacks, then he gets another attack off, and he gets up to to like nine or 10 and he's getting healed, all of a sudden he becomes hard to deal with. Cripple on an archer that's hitting the front row, a bit overrated. A lot of people have cleanse, cleanse healers, uh, cleanse this, cleanse that. So cripples don't always stick. You have a lot of cards with immunity that end up tanking. I don't hate cripple. I think it can be very effective in certain situations. It's just the, not the most powerful skill, mostly because it can be removed. Snare is interesting. I mean, it's an archer, so Snare helps. Snare is really good in Earthquake games, but he doesn't fly, so you're not necessarily using him. I guess it becomes a card that you could play with the Dragon Flying Summoner, but overall, not super impressed with this card, but an okay addition to the team when it comes to damage to cost and an interesting card for a sniper target. Uh, currently, with the Summoners, I'd say he only really works with Kelia, I mean, in a little deep swimmer game, are you really going to be using a four cost card? Not necessarily. I guess giving him the two armor and return fire makes him more of a sniper cushion, but I, I don't know. I don't see that. And obviously he doesn't combo with Vera because he already has the uh, snare. So let's go ahead and get back to the monsters so we can like, take a look at the tide biter tide biter is an interesting card again the water team got small cards they're already kind of a interesting kelly uh, low mana sneak monster malay monster team and this just gives them uh, an interesting card to have on the team the tide biter being reach and had one of the monsters that got the new reflection shield which blocks him from taking damage from thorns and um blast it gives him a very interesting spot on the team at all times so let's say you, you're worried about running into Yoden a lot of the time so you're playing something like something really good in the front with like a shield ability and some healers to heal them up well now you can go ahead and pay this guy in the second position and unless Yoden has scatter shot or is bouncing his attacks around all of his blast damage is going to do zero damage to your team it also works well against any of the other blast monsters and he is one that will be in the perfect position to do that and you know for three cost with at max level having three for three for damage for speed six health which isn't terrible for a guy that can't even take damage from blast is a very interesting card i actually also like that he's not malay because snipers won't be hitting him directly they'd be hitting the card next to him and even if that sniper had a blast damage for some reason it would do zero damage to him i think that the reflection shield is underestimated because it gives you a card on the board that possibly is basically immortal from taking damage if it is put in the right spot because nothing can directly target it and anything that would blast into it or any return damage that would come back to it is negated so how would you ever kill the tide biter if he's in that second position there's no card that would target him directly except for an opportunity monster but he has six hp 
So it's it's not hard to give the opportunity monsters somewhere else to go, especially if you're throwing chickens or other things on the board. So even though he has low mana, I can see him getting a little more use case in very strategic situations. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up my review of these two teams. I did it in just under 15 minutes, and hopefully you enjoyed that look at them and understanding how to use them. Um, I... I let me know, would you rather this be a little bit longer and I could do a longer video going into the cards or do you like the idea of the videos being about this long? Well, thanks everybody. This is Steve saying goodbye and if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe. I, I haven't been growing like I used to and it would be really cool to see the channel start to get a little bit bigger as I think Splinterlands is going to be becoming a lot more popular in the near future with these new rewards.